I want to make your life so much easier because I've got some of the easiest ways to make your cruise vacation better up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCommandBlog.com and it's pretty common to feel like that cruise you have booked starting to feel a little more complicated. So to help with that, I've got a whole bunch of super easy tips that you can apply to your upcoming sailing to make things a lot smoother. I've got tips for booking your cruise, embarkation day, shore excursions, how to save money, and more. My hope is after going through these tips, you'll suddenly feel a little bit better about your cruise and feel far less pressure on this trip. Now to make things even easier on you, I have the entire principal list of today's tips that can be sent straight to your email inbox. All you have to do is drop us your email at royalcaribbeanblog.com slash easy, and you can get the entire list sent over to you. All right, ready for all these easy tricks that I have? Let's do it. Starting with number one, especially restaurants for lunch. You can avoid the crowds of embarkation day lunch and start off your cruise with a leisurely lunch. You want to probably pre-book reservation before the cruise to assure yourself of a spot. As an added bonus, lunch can sometimes be cheaper than dinner. And if you have a dining package, well, you can't pre-book a spot before your cruise, but you can simply stop in and get a spot there, hopefully get a table for you. Number two, wear matching t-shirts. You can make it super easy to spot your whole crew on the first day or really any day of the cruise with matching t-shirts. This is a very popular trend right now, and you can find all sorts of nautical inspired and cruise shirts in general on Amazon and even customize them at other online retailers. Number three, read a past cruise compass. You won't be able to know the entertainment activity schedule months before your cruise, but a past cruise compass will give you a ballpark idea of what to expect. If you can find a cruise compass from the same ship you're sailing on in similar or even identical itinerary, well, you can really expect your cruise to match up very closely to what you see online. You can find an archive of past cruise compasses over at royalcaribbeanblog.com. We keep them all over there, so check them on out. If you do no other tips on this list, I think this one at number four is the most important, that is use a good travel agent. A good travel agent should cost you nothing extra to use their services, and travel agents can compare discounts to find the best deal and save you the most money in the end. Most importantly, they're available to answer questions and step in when there's a problem. And I gotta tell you, our friends at MEI Travel can help make your trip a thousand times easier you only stand to benefit from using a good travel agent. Next up, look for trivia on sea days. One of the best sea day activities is trivia sessions. There's usually multiple trivia sessions per day in different lounges, and trivia is free, and it's also a great way to meet other people on your cruise. Another really easy tip is to have a communication plan before you get on board your cruise. Group chats and apps like Facebook or WhatsApp are very common, but you'll all need to get an internet package for that to work. You could also use walkie-talkies or rely on voicemails in your cabins, but these tend to be more cumbersome than they're worth. Ensure you all agree on something before you get on board so no one is left in the dark. If you're cruising with family and friends, my next tip is to plan on eating dinner together. You can do whatever you want during the daytime, but plan to meet up for dinner each night to have a common time to meet up. It's a really good time to reconnect and make plans for the following day. Number eight, avoid over planning. If you try to plan too much, things can really get overwhelming for some friends in your group, as well as create rifts among friends. So leave time for everybody to do their own thing, keeping in mind you can still do things together on the fly. Number nine, bring a USB port outlet for more charging space. Surge protectors and power strips are not allowed on Royal Caribbean ships because they're a fire hazard, but you can bring a good USB outlet because that's perfectly safe for that. In addition, most ships don't have that many outlets to begin with, so bringing a USB extender outlet can really help you out in terms of not having to compete for the very few charging outlets you have in your room. Number 10, we're at double digits already. Bring bathing suits on embarkation day. Did you know the pools, water slides, and floor rider will be open on the first day of your cruise, but most people don't have their bathing suits with them, which means less crowded pools and water slides. So what you should do is wear your bathing suits on board or maybe keep it in your carry-on luggage and then change when you get on board the ship and take advantage of those low lines and low crowds. Next up, put your phone into airplane mode. Avoid crazy roaming fees by placing your phone into airplane mode. And no, it doesn't matter if you have an international plan because cruise ships' antennas aren't covered by them. You'll still be able to use the ship's Wi-Fi, but avoid carrier charges for exorbitant fees for roaming on another network by putting your phone into airplane mode once you get on board the ship. Number 12, bring a pen and a highlighter with you. You never know when you might want to write down a thank you note to a crew member or highlight an activity that you don't want to miss in the cruise compass, so make sure you have a pen and highlighter with you on board the cruise. Number 13, which is one of my favorite cabin hacks, buy magnetic hooks. 
By investing in a pack of strong magnetic hooks, you can place them around the room to hang whatever needs to be hung, like hats or bathing suits or what have you. Your stateroom walls are made out of metal, which means you can simply stick the magnet on the wall or ceiling and you're good to go. Number 14 is something I wish more people would do, and that is speak up if there is a problem. If something is not as expected or disappointing, nicely inform crew members of the issue and ask how it can be resolved. Don't suck it up. Try to find a solution to it. You can have a better cruise overall. Number 15, book anything you can in advance via the cruise planner. Boy, this will save you so much money compared to buying on board as well as your time. And keep in mind that you can always change your mind later on if you want to cancel that purchase because having something locked in is better than nothing at all. Next up is to look for deals even if there is no sale. While you're on that cruise planner site, check it regularly even if there is no sale advertised because you never know what you may find. Prices change all the time. Number 17, don't wait for the elevator on board the ship. Using the stairs can be a lot faster, plus can help burn off some of those vacation calories. Another really good idea is to bring Downy Wrinkle Release Spray. Did you know there's no self-service laundry on board your ship? And if you want to get something pressed, well, you have to send it out and that costs money. But invest in Downy Wrinkle Release or a similar product, I suppose. And that can really be helpful in order to make sure your clothes look really good. If you're worried about getting seasick on a cruise, well, there's a lot of great remedies out there, including one really easy one. Nausea caused by motions in the ocean, mild seasickness can be remedied with green apple. Seriously, you'll find green apples in the wind jammer, so it might be a good idea to take a couple back to your cabin and keep them for the rest of your cruise. Number 20, look for kids sale free deals. Royal Caribbean offers promotions where kids under the age of 13 staying in the same cabin as two other adults can qualify for free cruise fare. Now, there are a lot of blackout dates, but the kids sale free deal is among the most lucrative promotions offered. So if you can find a sailing that works, boy, you can really save a lot of money. Number 21 is one of my favorite tips out there, and that is talk to the crew members. Strike up conversations with crew members you encounter. You never know what kind of fun people you're going to meet. Your cabin attendant is usually one for a quick chat, and you might learn a thing or two, or it can really make someone else's day. So take some time. It's a good way to pass the time on board a cruise. Number 22, do everything the online check-in needs before your cruise. If you enter all the information, take the selfie, add a credit card to your account, you will fly through the cruise terminal during check-in time. Waste your time while you're at home doing that instead of at the cruise terminal. So do yourself a favor and fill out all the information in the online check-in via the Royal Caribbean app. Number 23, pre-book My Time Dining reservations. If you have My Time Dining, do yourself a favor and book a time in advance so that you wait less because people with reservations get priority for a table first. So if you want to wait less for your table with My Time Dining, make a reservation. You can do so via the Cruise Planner website or once on board the ship, but ideally you'll do it before the cruise. Number 24, don't waste time at guest services. Go there during less busy times. Guest services is open 24 hours a day. The best time to visit guest services are early in the morning, during dinner, and while the ship is docked in port, and of course, late at night. If you're visiting Royal Caribbean's private island, a perfect day at Coco Key, make sure you take advantage of the free trams there. There are complimentary shuttle services all around the island. When you get off the ship, look for golf carts that are waiting to take guests down the pier. There's also larger trams once you get on the island that will take you all around. There's no cost. Hop on, hop off. Easy peasy. If your cruise is going to Labadee, there is a complimentary ferry available. About halfway down the pier, there'll be an area in which you can board a ferry boat, take you to the opposite end of Labadee, and enjoy one of the quietest beaches available, Columbus Cove. Number 27, you got kids on board the cruise? make sure you register your kids for Adventure Ocean on embarkation day. Usually on the first day of the cruise, the Adventure Ocean staff is available for registrations beginning right around 1 p.m. or so. And the registration process is very quick, but it allows you to meet the counselors, your kids to meet them, and for everybody to see the facilities and get a better idea of what to expect. Number 28 might be a way to save some money, and that is to sign up for the Vitality Spa raffle. So on the first day of the cruise, there'll be a raffle in the Vitality Spa. The good news is most people who sign up don't actually show up to it. So that really increases your odds of winning the contest. So good luck with that. Number 29, look for alternatives to the buffet lines. You know, we talked earlier about going maybe to a specialty restaurant on the first day of your cruise, but if that is not worth it for you, or you're just on a sea day and you're looking to avoid the crowds, well, skip the Windjammer and go to alternatives that will have less of a crowd, such as Park Cafe, Cafe 270, Cafe Promenade, or Sorrentos. Of course, the exact options will depend on the ship you're on, but these can be great ways to get your food a lot faster. Number 30 is for anybody who's staying in a suite. Did you know that room service is complimentary? That's right. There's no service charge for room service orders. If you're staying in a suite, take advantage of that. Order some food and, and enjoy this awesome perk. Number 31, bring your own water on board. 
On boarding day, guests may bring non-alcoholic beverages as carry-on items on the first day of the cruise. Non-alcoholic beverages may not exceed 12 standard 17-ounce cans, bottles, or cartons per stateroom, and that includes, by the way, water, sodas, juices, whatever, as long as it's not alcohol. Gratuities are part of the total cruise cost, and my recommendation is to pre-book gratuities. By pre-booking gratuities, you'll lock in the gratuity rate in case of a rate change later on. Number 33, skip a port day. Staying on board your cruise ship during a port day can really have some awesome benefits because you can take advantage of discounts at the spa, enjoy wide open pool decks, and much shorter lines for signature activities like the floor rider, water slides, sky pad, anything else fun to do on board the ship. The number 34 easy tip is to use breakfast room service as a wake-up call. So there's still a complimentary continental room service breakfast option available to anybody out there. Prior to the breakfast being delivered, room service will call ahead to ensure that someone is awake and provides a good impetus to get up and get ready for the start of your day. So not only is somebody waking you up with a wake-up call, but most importantly, you'll have something to nosh on in order to start your day. Number 35, don't wait to renew that passport. Passport renewals have been up and down game of crazy long processing times, followed by improving times, and then back again. So if your passport is coming up for renewal anytime soon, do yourself a favor and get a head start on getting it renewed now. Number 36, specify the brand of liquor. When you order a cocktail or mixed drink, ask for which brand of liquor to use. This avoids the crew members putting the cheaper option in your drink. Speaking of drinks, if you have a drink package, you can use them at specialty restaurants. Your drink package not only works at bars and lounges, but it also, in specialty restaurants, the main dining room, and even Royal Caribbean's private destinations of Perfect Day, Coco Key, and La Badie. And another drink tip is always ask for a bottle of water with your drink order. If you have a Royal Caribbean drink package, even if you aren't thirsty enough for water, you can always get a bottle of water with your drink order. The crew members really don't mind. So bring the bottle back to your cabin and start stacking them up so when you go on shore excursions, you don't have to pay for water off the ship because you have a little stockpile of bottled water. Number 39, do yourself a favor, print out those luggage tags. Prior to leaving for your cruise, you really should print out luggage tags so you can put them on your checked luggage so you can be delivered to your stateroom. Yes, the porters can affix them at the terminal, but it takes a little bit longer. So do yourself a favor and get those luggage tags printed, put on your luggage before you leave home. Number 40, you can bring wine on your cruise. Guests wishing to bring personal wine and champagne on board may do so on boarding day, and you're limited to two 750 milliliter bottles per cabin. That's in addition, by the way, to the non-alcoholic beverage we talked about earlier. But keep in mind, no beer or hard liquor may be brought on board at any time. So it's got to be either wine or champagne. Number 41, fly in one day before your cruise begins. Really, truly, it is worth it. Fly in at least one day in advance to avoid a travel delay causing you to miss your cruise. As an added bonus, by arriving to your embarkation port at least a day early, that means you get to start a vacation even sooner. Number 42, prepare a carry-on bag for the first day. So you're going to give the porters all that checked luggage, but you want to have a small bag with you that you bring on board the ship that has some important things like medications, a bathing suit, sunscreen, travel documents. And as an added bonus, you can use this bag later on in the cruise as you go on shore excursions to carry some of these items as well as beach towels. Number 43, know what you can't bring. Refer to Royal Caribbean's list of prohibited items because this changes all the time. You might be surprised by the list, but there are some items you definitely can't bring. Now, there's firearms and ammunition you can't bring. You can't bring sharp objects, including all knives and scissors, although personal grooming items such as safety razors are allowed, and scissors with a blade length of less than four inches are allowed. You can't bring illegal drugs and substances. You cannot bring CBD products or CBD oil, even if it's legal where you live. You're visiting other countries. It's their rules. You cannot bring candles incense, coffee makers, clothing irons, travel steamers, or hot plates. Hoverboards aren't allowed. No martial arts or self-defense equipment, including handcuffs, pepper spray, or nightsticks aren't allowed as well. Flammable liquids and explosives aren't allowed. Hookahs are not allowed. Ham radios aren't allowed. Baby monitors aren't allowed. Electrical extension cords aren't allowed. Perishable food and meat products aren't allowed. And we already talked about alcohol not being allowed as well. And of course, dangerous chemicals, including bleach and paint, are not allowed as well. Number 44 is a really important one. Don't listen to bad reviews. People like to complain online about pretty much everything out there. So go on your cruise with an open mind and just enjoy it. My favorite example of why you shouldn't listen to online reviews is do yourself a favor. Go Google the Great Wall of China, one of mankind's greatest achievements, and you'll find the Google reviews of the Great Wall of China are four out of five stars. That's right. The Great Wall of China didn't get five stars. So the fact that you're, maybe someone didn't like your cruise ship is totally irrelevant. Enjoy your cruise. You'll have a great time. Number 45, suitcases fit under your bed. 
This will save you so much space. So not only will putting your suitcases under your bed save you that space, you'll get your luggage out of view for the cruise. Number 46, this is a tip that somebody told me, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Wear your tightest clothes first and have the loose ones for later on. If your cruise is long or you're doing a back-to-back -back sailing, well, then you really want to take advantage of this one because, listen, you're going to indulge a little bit. So if you got anything that's a little tight-fitting, wear it early on in the cruise. And my last easy tip for anybody on a Royal Caribbean cruise is to look for videos of your ship, itinerary, and room on YouTube. This is a very good way to learn about your ship excursions or even your cabin there's a lot of them that are out there so take advantage of that there you go 47 easy tricks that will make your cruise so much better i hope one or 47 of these make your cruise much better let me know in the comments below if i miss like a super easy tip that everybody can take advantage of and which of these tips have you used and really found to be a game changer and most importantly, don't forget to drop your email at royalcaribbeanblog.com slash easy. So that way you can get all 47 tips emailed to you and you don't have to jot anything down. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from royalcaribbeanblog.com and we'll talk again real soon.